everyone. Welcome back to video two in our cedar chest series. This is going to be step three where we're going to focus on sanding and scraping. You see me currently sanding down the areas we bondoed in the last video. So the grid of paper I am using in order to do this is an 80 grit and I'm using my Ryobi detail sander. Uh, both of those are preferences. You could go lower and do a 60 grit or higher and do a 120 grit. I'm not concerned about using a coarse grit because the chest is solid wood and not veneer. What you'll see me doing as I'm sanding this is I am running my hand over it. What you don't see me doing is I also have my eyes closed. So a great way to check if something is truly even with the surface is close your eyes and run your hand over the area. And if you cannot feel where that bondo starts and the wood ends, then you know you have an even surface. So you'll see me doing that many times throughout this video. I love though how as I'm sanding you can see that beautiful wood grain start coming through. I remember feeling so excited at this point seeing the raw wood grain underneath and just knowing in my gut that this piece was going to be awesome. So if you followed along last video, you'll recognize this is the corner that the Bondo started to get chunky on. Um, it wasn't the smooth consistency like we want it. Um, I did want to show you guys how it looked when I was sanding it. And you can see all the little pitfalls and the uneven surfaces and the air bubbles I'm having to sand out um, in order to attempt to get a smooth surface. So this is after the first round of bondoing. Um, I, there's little chunks flying everywhere off this actually. And uh, I ended up bondoing two more times with sanding in between after it dried in order to get a smooth surface because of the mess up in the beginning. So next step after sanding down the Bonto areas was to sand down the chest. I am still using my Ryobi sander with 80 grit sandpaper. And as you can see, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the sander. I really want to let the sander do the work to avoid any whirls or sandpaper patterns in the wood. I am trying to save as much of this beautiful cedar wood as possible uh, so I can stain it and showcase it. And I really don't want to have to go back over and do even more sanding work. You'll see me really fast forwarding through this and flying through this. Um, in total, sanding took me six hours, a little over six hours actually, to sand down this whole chest. And I definitely don't want you guys to have to watch six hours of sanding. So you'll see me go through this pretty quickly. Um, in this part, you can see my sander stops working as well. Um, and that's because the sander started getting so hot that the finish was melting to the sandpaper. So I brought out the big guns and started using my carbide scraper. Uh, it's a 2.5 inch and a carbide scraper uses a blade. That is very similar to a blade you would find in a planer or a planer machine. And it works very well for getting finish off. Uh, it normally cuts my sanding time in about half. Uh, so if it took me about six hours to do scraping and sanding, uh, it probably would have taken me double that had I not had my carbide scraper. So the carbide scraper gets the coating off very easily, but there's still some small lines and some uh, uneven wood that I'm going to go back over with my sander. Uh, and I switched it out and I'm using 120 grit here to just really sand down the wood and get it prepped for painting and staining. 
So I went about the entire chest like this. So this is the top and you can see it's really starting to come together. And then I'm also gonna show a clip of the front using my carbide scraper and you can really see how well that takes the finish off here. I even use this on the feet uh, and the sides. The inside did not have a coating on it, so I, there was no scraping to do on the inside or the lid, which is awesome. If you are going to use a carbide scraper and you have bondoed, make sure to not get the bondo uh, areas with your carbide scraper because you don't want to put any divots into the bondo. As a side note, I know I've mentioned a lot of different products in this video. I will be listing all the different products I used in the description of this video. So after sanding and scraping and prepping the chest, I moved on to painting and staining. You'll see some areas are already stained and that's because I was trying out different colors. I had a very broad sense of what I wanted to do with this chest, but I didn't have specifics and really chose the details as I went along. I knew for sure I wanted to play with black and white, and I also knew that I was going to have to paint the trim of this chest because I had to redo the corners with the Bondo, that this was the first thing I needed to get painted and covered up. So the black paint I'm using is Noir by Good Bones Paint. And I have a lot of it in house, which is why I chose this color. Noir is just a very deep, true black. Um, and I really enjoy the color. The brush I'm using is a triangle brush by Zebra. Uh, I really use Zebra brushes pretty consistently in my workshop. They are pricey, but I definitely think they're worth the money for the amazing paint job that they help me get on each piece. Uh, and you can see just how precise I'm going with this brush especially the stroke here, this is my favorite, <laughs> without tape. So you can get really precision strokes with them. Um, and I definitely recommend zebra brushes all day long. It's just about the only paintbrush I use anymore. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start the top. And like I said, I had a very broad sense of what I wanted to do. Um, kind of more like an argyle type of design with like cut-ins. And I wanted it to look like it was extending off of the chest front. So I started using, this is green frog tape. Whenever I'm using exact lines, I like to use the frog tape as opposed to a blue painter's tape. And I started in by measuring where I wanted the cut-ins at the ends and started there. Then I knew that I wanted to extend it off of the side. So instead of measuring again, I just used the width of the tape and I ended up just going what I thought was going to be two, but then I ended up doing a three tape width length in and just used the width of the tape to really determine uh, the design going off the ends of the chest. With my goal being to keep as much wood as possible, I decided to make a diamond inside the middle diamond my goal is to cover up that little piece of Bondo, but still maintain as much wood. So here's how that looks. I did end up doing the diamond off camera because my camera died, unfortunately. So after doing the diamond, I moved on to the end pieces where it will continue off the chest. Head and sanded in between each coat of this Good Bones Noir. Every piece had two coats on it. I sanded with 220 grit paper and probably left them about an hour in between each dry time. And then I left this lovely fail in here for you guys. Here's me reconsidering all my life choices. What it doesn't show is I had paint in my mouth, in my face. It was pretty bad. And I spent about two hours refixing it all. So I actually ended up taking the tape off in order to fix all those splatters, which is why it looks so different now. 
I still had a couple pieces of Bondo that were showing. So this is how I decided to include the white is to cover up those pieces of Bondo. You see me taping it off here and I'm essentially going to do two big X's that will encompass the side uh, triangles of black and the middle diamond of black and almost like outline it. Now, one thing I do want to talk about that you'll see coming up here is I didn't put a primer under the black paint. And typically with pieces that have knots like cedar or pine, you do want to put primer because there's a risk of bleed through uh, with tannins and it can actually stain your paint. But typically that's not as big of an issue in dark colors because it doesn't really show. But in white, it'll show very drastically as either a yellow or red bleed through. So with these white pieces that I am putting in here, I am going to be painting with thin primer first. Uh, bin primer is by Zinser. It is great for blocking stains because it has a shellac base. And I'm just using a little foam sponge to put it on. Uh, bin will ruin just about anything that you paint uh, it on with. I let the bin dry for about an hour, sanded it down, and then I used Bone by Good Bones Paint. And that's the white paint that I use here. I am also using the Palm Pro by Zebra to apply it. And then while that's drying, I went ahead and started doing the front of the chest. Uh, again, wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I kind of wanted to have the black triangles cut in like similar to the top of the chest. So I brought up my square and started measuring them out and taping them out. Essentially what I did was select a midpoint and then just take from that midpoint and go back to the corners with the tape. And that was my triangle. So I went ahead and painted it with one coat of Noir by Good Bones Paint. And then after an hour, I sanded it down and put in a second coat of Noir by Good Bones Paint. And while that's drying, I went ahead and started staining the areas in between the two. At this point, I wasn't sure if I was going to carry the white over. I knew that I was going to carry the black over and I was going to have to do something on the sides as well, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. So here's some satisfying tape peeling and where I left off at. And I was really unhappy with the results. So I started fiddling with what I wanted and decided to do almost like an hourglass shape with the white on the front as well to pull the white from the top into the front and make it look way more complete. The difficult thing about this chest is that it was an odd measurement across and then the keyhole was not exactly in the middle of the chest, which made measuring out this hourglass pretty tricky to get it to a place where it looked even and symmetrical, even though it was not even and symmetrical. But you'll find a lot of antique and vintage pieces that were handmade or at least partially handmade will not be even and symmetrical all the way through. So one thing I didn't talk about on the top that I'd like to address now is how I prevent bleed through with bin primer. So I'm using a clear coat. This one's Rust-Oleum, but you can use any clear top coat. And I am spraying where the tape meets the wood. Once this dries, it'll prevent a bleed through and make a good barrier between the bin and the wood. While that's drying, I went ahead and did the sides and I did a black wedge on the sides similar to the front on the opposite side, there is actually a corner reconstructed with Bondo, which is why I had to do the black wedge on the side as well. But I left plenty of wood and also left the handles a nice stained wood. 
So once that top clear coat is finished, I went ahead and took the bin primer and I painted it. And then I let that dry for, I think a little over an hour based on the humidity of the day. And I went ahead and stained the sides as well as staining the top and the inside to match everything else. And that was me putting the handle back on. I left the handles wood as well. Once the bin was dry, I went ahead and sanded it with 220 grit paper, and that was time for the final coat of paint, which was the Good Bones paint color bone again, same as we used on the top. And here's the final paint reveal. So good painter tape strip here. You will see that it has a couple of spots that it did bleed through, even though we used the clear coat. It's not a perfect method, but it's definitely better than the alternative of having a lot to fix. In the next video, I'll clear coat all of this and talk about what clear coat I use, as well as staging for pictures. Thanks for watching.